Hi. So, this is a very good. I'm not sure whether you were uh, born in a time where people used to use uh, welly boots where they put cats inside and they do castration with the cats just growling and uh, screaming inside there. I'm so glad those times are gone. Today, as part of Fear Free, we're going to discuss about cats, cat carriers more specifically, how to choose and how to use. The first step to a fear-free transport of cats actually occurs long before the day of the appointment with the choice of an appropriate carrier for the cat. How often does a cat run away when he sees a cat carrier? Are you surprised? Many owners only use a carrier for bats or cat-free visits. The carrier is usually kept in storage and is filled with dust and cobwebs when brought up for the cat. I know that because that is what I see often in my consults. Would you like to wear dirty clothes, knowing that the only time you wear them is when you, when you have to go to the doctors, get examined by a stranger, and possibly get an injection? Today, I'll be giving you a few tips on how to choose cat carriers, where to place them in the house, and how to encourage your cat to be familiar with it. It is so you can use it as a reliable mode of transport when needed. So, either hard or soft carriers can work for cats. Choose one that's big enough for the cat to lie down, turn around in, but not so large that the cat won't feel safe and secure in it. Be sure to find a carrier that has at least two openings and that can be easily taken apart, both for use as a bed in the home and, if necessary, during examinations at the vets. If the cat will be transported to their visit in a car, the safety of the carrier may be also be of consideration. Kitten owners should be advised to begin training their kitten early, very early, to sleep in their carrier. Leave the carrier out at all times, so your cat is familiar with it. Where you place the carrier in your home is also very important. I'm going to give you six tips to where to place your carrier. Tip number one, do not place the carrier in a hidden location. Nobody sees it, like a dusty storage. Tip number two, make the carrier an additional piece of furniture. Make it part of the cat's furniture and the cat's life. There's a food bowl, there's a litter tray. Why not the carrier? For older cats, take the carrier out of its storage location. This helps the carrier less scary to the cat because they've seen it before. Sometimes we only keep them in storage and as mentioned, the only time you take them out is when you're going to go to the vets or when you go to the cattery. Of course, your cats will associate the carrier with something not so nice. Tip number four, choose a place where the cat already likes to rest and teach them that it is not even better with a carrier over there. Okay, so that's where you can sort of uh, put it where it likes to rest and you can put in you know, a soft blanket, um, something comfortable for it to rest as so on top of where it likes to rest, it's actually resting in the carrier. Number five, most cats would prefer the carrier to be placed on an elevated surface rather than on the floor. So a little bit higher, maybe on a uh, white bookshelf, maybe on a white windowsill. And the last tip would be don't forget to take the top off so it is actually more open. So it doesn't have to be uh, totally closed, just take the top off. That may help. Now that we've done that and we know where to put it, how to attract your cat to his carrier. I'm going to give you five tips. Tip number one, put your cat's favorite things around the carrier so it's like to play around it, it's not too scary. Tip number two, play with your cat around the carrier. Don't make it so far away. Make him feel uh, sort of a, so it's a not, not, not too much of a shock to the system when actually playing around it because it's not too scary. Tip number three, place a pheromone infused towel or bed and or an object of clothing permeated with your scent inside the carrier. So that little kitty cat 
will understand that place to be a place of safety because it's got your smell in it. Tip number four, play some treats, catnip and toys inside. Why not? You want to get them into the carrier? You must give them a reason to be in the carrier in the first place. Then when they're in it, they realize that, hey, it's actually not too bad. The last tip, number five, feed your cat in or near the carrier. If they associate with something nice like food, that will certainly improve their mood when they're around the carrier or in the carrier. If your cat doesn't immediately love the carrier, don't worry. Slow and steady wins this race. Once your cat has entered the carrier on its own, you should reward it with food and praise. If your cat will not get into or near the carrier, observe your cat and make changes based on your cat's body language and behavior, which will be beneficial for both you and your cat. Don't use any negative punishment that will probably just serve to cause more fear, anxiety and stress instead. I hope this has given you some useful tips about choosing your cat carrier, where to place it and how to use it more effectively. If you want to find out tips on transporting your cat stress-free to the vets, don't forget to watch the first part of transporting your cat to the vets using fear-free guidelines. Comment below your take-home message from this. I look forward to see you at the next uh, live event. This is Amity.